Hello everyone, Zuza here. We're back with another developer update. I honestly didn't expect to see this one so soon, because uh, we're five days away from this going live. And also, please, please, please forgive the atrocity that is my hair at the moment. It, it needs a wash. I, I haven't had time today. I've had so much going on. Um, and I was very curious what the bloody hell I was going to do for, as you can see, look at it. Why is it doing that? Stop. I'm not an anime protagonist. Stop flicking it out in random directions. Ugh. Anyway, um, I was wondering what the, on earth I was going to do with the rest of my day and then I, now that I got everything done because I didn't plan to get this far. And literally the second I sat down, I got added by a friend of mine that the developer update's here. Hooray! I'm interested to see what they're doing from PTV to live. Uh, from the PTB, Chucky has come out. Uh, so everything related to Chucky is going to be looked at here. And uh, more nervously, Trickster buffs. Changes, in fact. There's a lot of things they did to Trickster. They bumped him right up to 11. Like, he literally went from 4 to 11. Like, he became 115. They removed his recoil, increased the laceration, but now he gets main event in Six Knives. They basically just turned the dials up and just... They buffed everything. It was a little scary and a little problematic. So, um... Like, it wasn't... It, it needs fine-tuning. So we're going to go through this, and we're going to see what exactly they've done. Let's not waste any more time. Excuse me. All right, so... For possibly the last time this year, we're back with another developer update. That's true. Fuck. Yeah, it's nearly the end of November. Dog, what are you doing? Sorry about that. I just... Hearing his thumpy paws clacking about upstairs, I'm like, what are you doing? He usually just sleeps all day. Anyway, um... A series of posts covering everything coming to Dead by Daylight. This time around we have a pint-sized uh, post focusing on all the changes being made after this past public test build. Pint-sized folk post. Okay, yeah, there's probably only going to be micro changes, to be honest, but it'll be interesting to see what they've done. Uh, the good guy, of course, Chucky. Um, we were thrilled to see Chucky receive such a warm welcome during the PTB. He is your new friend till the end, after all. Ah, uh, nice, okay. First impressions seem to be positive, so we'll be keeping changes uh, to the Dead by Daylight uh, Chucky content minimal for the full release. Okay, uh, first up, to ensure that survivors have a chance to react, we have slightly increased the time it takes to scamper under a pallet to 1.4 seconds. Was 1.2. Does that 0.2 make a difference? Honestly? Uh, similarly, we've, uh, similarly, we've adjusted the killer's movement speed after missing a slice and dice attack to allow the survivor to gain more distance after a successful dodge. Okay, fair enough. Uh, second, we fine-tuned the slice and dice attack duration. Uh, sorry, uh, fine-tuned the slice and dice attack. Uh, duration extending add-ons such as a jump rope were strong favorites. To reduce reliance on these add-ons and make others more appealing, we reduced the effects of these add-ons and incorporated part of their effects into the base kit. Okay, right. Uh, slice and dice's duration has been increased to 1.2 seconds with one. Okay, okay. Uh, speaking of add-ons, we've done a uh, balancing pass on many of the other add-ons, bringing the strongest and weakest options more in line with one another. Okay, um... I don't know. I don't know. I'll need to see it. Um, there was a concerning playstyle that was um, brought to attention by mainly Scott, uh, Scott Jund, and... This doesn't seem to do a lot to address that, which was basically you uh, run up to a downed pallet as Chucky. Uh, the, you say the survivor just vaults the pallet, um, and then you just hold onto your power. You go into um, hidey ho mode. You go under the pallet, and you just hit them because the survivor can't uh, do anything. I don't think they can interact with the pallet so long as Chucky is um, crawling under it, as in they can't vault over it, um, which. I kind of feel like they should. Maybe that should be some sort of counterplay to the whole idea. Um, I'm not sure. We need to see. Um, but basically, yeah, he'd scamper under the pallet and the survivor could just not really do anything. Like, it doesn't matter if they made distance because he'd just walk up with them and M1 them. Or he would um, end up slice and dicing if he wanted to. Not that he ever needed to because he just... It basically just led to kind of a guaranteed hit no matter what. Like, pallets were just meant nothing to this guy. Uh, if, if you did it, you just waited out and waited for his power to activate and then hit you. Okay. But we'd have to see. Batteries included. 
Uh, last up, we had a small tweak to one of the perks batteries included. This perk gives the killer a lingering speed boost when they pass by a powered generator, but there's a slight problem with this. When the last generator is powered, all generators become powered. Uh, this made the perk far stronger during the end game than intended, especially on smaller maps and or when paired with other perks such as Noed. Uh, rather than reducing the effects of the perk, we instead added a new clause. Batteries included now deactivates when the exit gates are powered. Right, okay, that's 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 fair enough, because it could be a very situational thing where it becomes like a really stupidly strong perk in the endgame. Which is kind of when you'd want it, uh, because bef beyond that, is it that beneficial otherwise? Do you really want to be walking past power generators for a... eh, I don't know. I don't, I've not been overwhelmed by any of Chucky's perks, I find them all a bit sort of... Uh, a lot of people are ranting and raving about the obsession-based one, and I just think it's kind of mid, personally. I think it's fine, but, uh, uh, but that's me. Anyway, uh, this is the one I'm excited for, uh, the Trickster. Okay, this could be... Okay, all right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, this past PDB featured a bundle of balance changes for the Trickster, aiming to improve his lethality and make him feel better to play. Uh, while these changes did make the Trickster stronger, many felt they made him a little too powerful, making him difficult and frustrating to play against. Yes. Uh, with this in mind, we have a few adjustments on the way for when the update will be released. First, we are reverting the Stricter's throw rate to three blades per second. That's, yeah, I, I think that's sensible. I, I do think that's sensible. Uh, this will give survivors a little more time to break line of sight before they are injured, yes. Uh, the laceration meter will remain at eight blades like in the PTB, but his increased movement speed will help the tricks to catch up, so they are keeping the 115. <sighs> okay. Uh, second, although we'd like for main event to happen more often than it historically has, we found that it was a little too easy to earn during the PTB. This was especially true when certain add-ons were used, allowing it to be charged up with just a few blades. Uh, going forward, main event will require eight blades to activate. Okay, yeah, that's fair on the basis that you have to at least remove a health state with blades before you can get main event, meaning that the survivor can then get the speed boost, which is kind of beneficial, but at the same time, does that really fix the issue? Uh, maybe a little bit. I mean, you at least guarantee that the survivor makes distance, um, unless those add-ons are still as they are, but we'll have to see. Um, similarly, we have re similarly, we have replaced the effects of a handful of add-ons, uh, most of which interact with main event. Okay, right. G Wounds Autograph, a uh, new effect, increases the time before a combo ends by 10%. Before a combo ends? I don't know what a... What do you mean by... It increases the time before a combo ends by 10%. Uh, oh, as in... Does this mean he keeps his throw rate? No, he always keeps his throw rate. It's a flat throw rate. Wasn't it? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Fist Spins Photo New Effect increases the time before a combo ends by 15%. I'll have to look into what that means. Death Throws Compilation. Oh, we removed the effect entirely? Okay. New Effect. Reveal the aura of survivors hit during main event for 6 seconds. What? <laughs> Why? Why? You just made the Eerie shitter than one of his purples. <sighs> okay. A bit of digressing here. Um. They underest- I feel like Behaviour really overestimate how um, impactful auras are in a game. Auras are really strong. They're really strong effects, but on someone that you're already chasing, they make minor difference. In certain circumstances, it can help with mind gaming. I, I, I don't deny that. Um, but when you already know where a survivor is, seeing their aura for six seconds is not that valuable. I don't think. And you have to... You have to hit that survivor during main event? Ooh, maybe actually now that I'm thinking about it. Hmm. Yeah, but the main event doesn't last that long to justify the... Aura read. Because I'm just thinking at a TNL when they kind of just make it around the corner, and obviously you're slower when you're in main event, so seeing the aura and be able to uh, predict and mind game them because you can see which way they're going could be beneficial, but... 
at the same time, like I, I, I don't see how this add-on could be useful at all. Um, if the aura reading was for longer, say 15 seconds or, or uh, 10, 12, um, it would be pretty darn good. Like, I think it would be a really good add-on, um, but just to reveal the aura of a survivor hit during main event, eh, maybe a, maybe a hint of hindered from the first blade? A little bit? Not Nothing major? I don't know. I, I, I don't think that really does a lot. Um, and there's a part of me that did like the old effect, and I, I know Death Throws was way too strong in the PTB, and the fact that you could just main event get all your knives back, that was a problem, but I... I don't see how that's beneficial. If you didn't know, he has a cufflinks add-on that reveals the aura of a survivor that is um, one or two blades away from maximum laceration, um, whereas when they'd about be about to remove a health state, which is more consistent. It, it, it basically has the same kind of effect in that it doesn't matter if you're main event or if you're uh, just throwing knives regularly, you get an aura read on them when, you're, when you um, need it the most. So, I don't know why you'd ever run this add-on over that purple. Because that purple seems like it's going to be a lot more situationally valuable. Uh, and it can do the exact same thing that this does. I think I think it might even be for the same length of time, maybe longer, I don't know. Um, anyway, Eerie Photo Card. The haste bonus is now lost when a survivor is injured. Previously when a survivor entering the dying... Uh, oh, when it was entering the dying state. Oh, okay. I mean, I didn't know the effectiveness of Eerie, of Eerie Photo Card. I never used it, but yeah. And we've re um, with that, we've reached the end of it. Okay, so Trickster is... Trickster's fine now. I, I think Trickster is probably in a healthier spot. I like this idea of them bringing it back down to three blades. Um, yeah, it was for during the PTB. Um, last rate means it's still the same. Uh, increased movement speed. They kept, they kept that. They kept the recall. They kept the 115. Um... They fixed the death throws issue, and main event... I think main event is fine. I think main event is fine. I don't know. I don't know if this is really the issue. The The, the thing is with main event was... The issue was never um, it activating infrequently. It was the... It, well, it wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't about it activating so little. It's just always activating in the least advantageous situations. It would always trigger when you're chasing down one person and they're like one blade hit away from uh, going down regardless. And then it would fade by the time you would actually benefit from using it. It was not so much how often you could use it, it was when you could use it. Um, just making it happen more regularly... Why? I don't know. Um, I suppose there is benefit in that he get, he keeps his lethality now, uh, because obviously main event doesn't consume knives. You have infinite as your main eventing, but obviously there's a cooldown on your power then between... Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, but honestly, I think these are perfectly fine and healthy changes, and I cannot wait to see them go to live um, and actually play Trickster normally and not be so frustrated by that bloody recoil and other things. At least now, if I'm missing a knife, it's because I'm bad. So I can appreciate that. And that concludes the PTB. And that will be going live in five days. Uh, on the 28th, I believe, which is a Tuesday. Oh, five days away! I can't believe it! Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. These are my thoughts on uh, PTB to live. It's a shame there's not more to it, really. Um, it's still going to have that issue um, of there's going to be, like, really fast survivor queues and really slow killer queues because they've buffed two killers and provide... There's nothing for survivors at all. Only a made for this nerf, and that's it. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao for now.